Hi, welcome back. I'm Mocha Pronto. Today we are going to talk about some of my photos. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to before I was even Mocha Pronto. So some history on my thoughts about drag is I never wanted to be a drag queen. Uh, first person I saw that I just really gagged me was Kevin Aviance because here is this bald-headed queen, no titties, no pantyhose, no padding, just in some heels, just being fierce, stomping around, and having a good time. So that was kind of the first inkling of someone who I wanted to emulate in my whatever it is I was doing at the time. So uh, fast forward to about 2009, I was in Orlando, Florida at the Parliament House on vacation. And I was with my friend and mentor, if you will, my drag mother. Again, she doesn't like that term, but. Um, so it was Mardi Gras weekend and we were getting ready to go out to the club. And she was getting ready and was like, you should wear something. And I'm like, well, what? So, to make a long story short, she painted this one eye, here's the photo, put this one eye in glitter, put on her top, this is all her stuff except the shorts in my shirt, gave me some platform boots and gloves with fringe on it, and honey, you couldn't tell me nothing. I had such a good time um, that we made this an annual vacation for Mardi Gras weekend, which was late March. And uh, we went there probably about three to four years in a row. And never did any drag after that until the very next year that it was Mardi Gras weekend. They had a face painter. So we went out to the face painter and had her paint my face. And I was like, no, honey, take it all the way back here. I went back to the room and glued some gems to my head, put on some hoop earrings and a feather bow, and again, you couldn't tell me shit. Year number three. Again, no drag between these uh, vacations. Uh, year number three. Yes. <laughs> put a glitter on both eyes this time, and uh, couldn't tell me nothing. Year number four. This time I was wearing a dress. Um, had someone do my eye makeup. Oh, I got ink that year. And, um, yeah. So, there was another look I did in white. Um, I guess they had a white party or something one of those days. But, still giving a little bit of boy. But, whatever. So, this is my friend Sion Flair. And uh, the time she was living in Chicago, we did meet in Detroit and went on those vacations together. She moved away to Chicago, recorded some music, dance music, and was a staple in the Chicago nightlife scene. So I went there at every opportunity I had to ha hang out with her and just have a good time during the weekend. And uh, these are some of the photos that we took. So I came back to Detroit and had this grand idea because all everyone was like, oh girl, you're fair. So yada, 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 filled my head up with all this stuff. So there was a amateur night. It was a Sunday at the works in uh, downtown Detroit. And I entered and it was a series of about two to three, four weeks. I'm not sure. Um, I don't remember exactly, but I ended up either winning or tying or something like that. But at the end of the, uh, you know, it was kind of like a drag competition, if you will. I was asked by the manager of the bar to host a Sunday night, which was amazing. And I did that for a few months until that kind of fizzled out. Had a great time. All right, so at this time I was single and I decided I wanted to see if someone would pay me to be in drag. That was my goal. So I spent a lot of time going to open mic nights and just being out in the club scene, which was still thriving back in this time, 2009, 2010, 11. And uh, 
again, I was not trying to be a drag queen. I didn't, I refused to wear titties, nails, but I would wear some heels with bare shaved legs and, you know, put on makeup and things like that, trying to be very club kid and cunty and all that kind of stuff. So, um, my friend, uh, Scion Flair, Robert, would invite me to all these gigs that he had, whether it would be Milwaukee Pride, Kansas City Pride, performing at different clubs around the country, and just going out and having a good time. So here are some photos uh, from that period. Again, this is my early days. I was pretty much just like backup dancing and being a... Uh, accessory or part of an entourage but it was a blast um hung out a lot in chicago uh these are some of those photos and um early beginnings of drag um some of the more elaborate makeup was not done by me but my uh other friend franklin who incidentally on one of her many trips to Chicago, I decided that I had to have a name. So I, we were in the car, it's about a four hour drive to Chicago, and we were brainstorming. And at the time, McDonald's had come out with their iced coffees, and there was a giant billboard that said Mocha Pronto, which was an advertisement for McDonald's iced coffee. And I was like, oh, that's cute. I'm like, well, if we don't come up with anything else better before we get to Chicago, that's going to be it. Well, we didn't come up with anything better. And love it or hate it, that's my name. And um, I think it describes me pretty well. All right, this one here. This is uh, me at one of my very first gigs at Backstreet in Detroit, which has long been closed. It was a great space. Um, I really like this picture because it was... I had a blast. Um, I liked the way I looked, just kind of pieced together a bunch of stuff, just very mismatched and punk rock and club kid, a little bit of drag. So, uh, yeah. So we will end this video here. And we will continue on with uh, more pictures. Okay. Yeah. Um, around the period of... 2015, uh, my friend Sion retired from the drag and club scene, kind of leaving me on my own. So, again, I still had those feelings of not wanting to be a drag queen, but I did want to have the life experience of saying that, hey, I entered a pageant. So, Miss Mocha Pronto decides that she is going to enter the world of pageantry. Now, quite a while ago, a couple years before that, I met Maria Zatiz at the club, who said if I ever needed help with pageant prep, to give her a call. So I did. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about pageantry or drag makeup, per se. I know a little bit about makeup, enough to get around, but, you know, not the way that, you know, typical drag queens do their makeup. And if I want to enter a drag pageant, then I need to look like a drag queen. So, uh, Maria and I have grown and become really good friends. Um, so, she started me in my world of pageantry, which includes everything from helping the dress getting made, to the jewelry, to the hair, makeup, everything. It was never my expectation to win any of these pageants, but after I did my first one, I got a lot of great feedback, and I decided to continue. So pageantry is extremely competitive, and uh, I've learned a lot. Um, I'm certainly no makeup artist, but I've come a long way in my makeup game. And, um, you know, it's difficult to... It's a small project, if you will. So it's kind of part project management in getting your hair made or styled or do it yourself, getting the materials, making sure that um, the materials get to you in time, having the gown made and fitted, 
um, working on a talent with dancers and going to rehearsals and scheduling your time off and paying everyone, not to mention that, that pageants cost a lot of money. And I'm very happy with uh, what I've achieved, if you will. And I think it's definitely made me a better... So to show the progression, I will show you the two photos, one my very first time in drag, to one that I feel was definitely the height, if you will, of my drag career. So there they are, side by side. I don't know which is better. So there you have it. Mocha from beginning to the end.